sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are. Welcome, welcome. Good Monday morning, Monday afternoon to some of you, Monday evening for a few others. This is Andrew David. This is uh, Blake Newbar's High Performance Call. Now, we are in the middle of a push to become more efficient, to become better. Mondays are a lot of times the days when people already start getting bogged down and it's going to affect the rest of your week. And you're saying, I'm, you know, you're tired of slogging through life and your days without any control. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the books that I, I recommend when you start this program, but I want to talk to you about how to begin to take control over your day. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about, now I don't have a, a physical copy of the book. I have it on Kindle, right? You see that? Um, oh, it already switched over. Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs is the book. Hal Elrod has Miracle Morning for Miracle Morning. He has Miracle Morning for Salespeople, Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents, Miracle Morning for Addiction Recovery, and you know, a half dozen other things. Um, Rick, it's probably because I was turning as opposed to speaking directly at my mic. If the audio was is my audio okay? You guys hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. So Miracle Morning. How many of you guys have read it? How many of you guys have actually applied it? Some of you, I know some of you have started. So we're going to go over some of this stuff. When it comes to this, go ahead. Somebody got a comment? No, no, no. I was just saying that I am applying it. Good. How has it been? Amazing. Good. Excellent. I woke up today and I've mentioned this before. I'm not normally a morning person. And uh, I decided that today, since I was going to be doing this training, I should probably make sure that my morning is fairly productive. And so I got up nice and early and got things done. Now he talks about getting up super early in the book. And some people are able to do that. I'm not a, a 5 a.m. riser. Even when I wake up early, that's just not happening for me. Um, but I'm, I'm blessed in the fact that, you know, my commute to work is about 15 feet right? Doesn't, uh, doesn't take me too long. Ernie, what time? Just a little before seven, honestly, between 6.30 and seven is when I roll up. Um, but I plan out my day to give me enough time to get things done. So what we're going to talk about, Hal Elrod um, and Miracle Morning. So we're going to get into some key elements. Now, here's, here's what I'm going to say about this. This is one method of organizing your morning and organizing your day. I recommend applying it seeing how it works, understanding when you do it, the first little bit is probably going to be difficult because you're transitioning. If mornings have always been a struggle, waking up even earlier to try and get some of this done isn't going to make it easy right away. But it can help you build up some of the habits. The key to all of this is establishing control, pulling some of that control back and putting it in your hands. And if you can do that first thing in the morning, especially at the beginning of the week, it can really set you up for more success. So try it out. Try it out for a few weeks. See how it works. You may end up keeping some of it. You may keep all of it. You may modify things. There's different ways that you can run this. Okay. So here's one of the reasons that we talk about. One of the reasons why personal development is so important. So this is a quote from Jim Rohn. And if you're unfamiliar with him, go do some study because he's an absolutely fantastic guy. So he talks about your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. So if you are going through this process and you are struggling, trying to get things going, um, then, or, or you've done it a few times, start here. Start with personal development. Start with you. Okay, so we're talking about Miracle Morning for entrepreneurs, the book I just showed you now, Savers is the key, the overarching message without this book. So it's an acronym, Savers. We're going to talk about each of these letters. Okay, I'm going to go fairly quickly because I want to hit each one. If you've read the book, then you'll know some of this. So share with me, guys, some of your thoughts as we go through. Number one, he talks about first, you know, you're setting up your morning, you're getting into your day. And we begin with silence. 
there is too much noise going on um, throughout the day, throughout our lives. If you want calm, clarity, peace of mind, start every morning with a period of purposeful silence. Uh, some of you guys know, some may not. So when I was 19, I um, became a missionary and I went down to Brazil. I was in Rio de Janeiro. I was there for two years. Rio is a city. It, it's If you're here in the U.S., like we're very sheltered in what we know about other locations. Some people only know when they think of Brazil, they only think about, you know, the Amazon and, and the Indians and other people only think about carnival carnival and um the beaches and you know there's a bit more than that so rio is a city at the time that i was there if i remember right somewhere between 11 and 15 million people in the greater um you know rio, rio de janeiro area it's a big big city most of it that i i got a chance if some of you guys are familiar with brazil i you know i got a chance and familiar with rio I got to go to Baja de Chuca. I got to go to, um, you know, Copacabana and the Ipanema. You, know, you guys have heard some of those songs, right? A little Barry Manilow there. You know, visited Pão de Açúcar and the Cristo Head and Tour, the big Christ statue. Um, got to do all sorts of cool stuff. But I was there doing missionary work. And then I was in all of these areas that a lot of times you wouldn't visit as, as a tourist, right? Now... It's also a very, very large city with a tremendous population with a lot of music. And what I mean by a lot of music is just about every city you would walk down. If you're not familiar, if you've never really been to a Latin country, it's hard to really describe to you how much people interact with other people. If you're used to being like, I'm not exactly sure how UK is because I haven't visited yet here in the US. People go to work, they go to their homes, they go to the stores, but you don't hang around with people in neighborhoods at least as much as they do there. Everybody is always out and talking and music is always playing and cars are always going by playing music. And half the time there are speakers up on telephone poles as you're walking down the street and it's like you're going through an MTV you know, music video half the time. You know, There's always a background song playing no matter what you're doing. Did I learn Portuguese? Yes. Yeah, I, I am fluent. I read it, write it, speak Portuguese. Absolutely. I came back uh, at the time speaking very much like a carioca. My accent was pretty, it was thick enough that, um, you know, people thought I was, I wasn't making fun of people. It was just where I learned to speak. Rio's got a very pronounced accent. And now when I speak Spanish, I speak like a Brazilian, you know, and if I don't know the word in Spanish, I just say it in Portuguese and, and play with it a little bit. You know, um, anyway, going through Rio, just I want you to imagine the level of noise that you have now. Some of you guys maybe turn on the TV to have background noise at home or you play music or you've always got, you know, headphones in or you're driving around and there's the radio on or you're at work and you're working. But that somebody's playing music in the background. You get into an elevator. There's music. You're walking through the store. There's music playing. There's always noise. Crank that up by about 10. Okay. Yeah. Genie highway noise. Some, you know, James, the trucker, like there's always the Sherman's truckers, but the level of noise was exceptionally higher. So I'm down in Rio and, and we got to visit the Jardim Botanica. There's this huge botanical garden in Rio. It's tremendous, very, very large, right in the middle of the city. And we were walking around. I was there with, with a buddy. We're walking around for a couple of hours and we both had this feeling like something was just, it, something was weird. Something was off. Couldn't figure out what it was. We're walking around and I stopped and I turned to him. I said, you know what it is? You know why we feel weird? It's quiet. Like there's no noise. There's no cars backfiring. There's no music. People aren't talking. Like there's nothing. It's just us. And, and we stopped and kind of recognized. So we took a few minutes to just relish the silence and it got to the noise was enough that when I got home after two years in, in Rio for about two weeks, you know, they talk about, you ever seen in the movies, like when um, people live in a certain place and they get back and they can't sleep in a regular bed, right? Something like that. It took a while for me to decompress from all of that noise. And, and the stress that's it, 
involved with it. If you're going through your life with a constant theme playing behind you, background music, TV, something, if there's always noise and you don't allow yourself silence, you are creating a level of fatigue for your brain that you just simply aren't aware of. Please find some time for silence. The morning is the best time for that. Absolutely. Uh, right before you go to bed as well, maybe during the day, but find time for silence. Okay. So here, um, silence seems to have the opposite effect of the brain to noise. Noise may cause stress. And I'm going to give you guys these slides inside the, the Google Drive. While noise may cause stress and tension, silence releases tension in the brain and body. A study published in the journal um, discovered that two minutes of silence can prove to be even more relaxing than listening to relaxing music. The brain is actively internalizing and evaluating information during silence. Silence relieves stress and tension, and it replenishes our cognitive resources. Let your brain rest a little bit. Give it some silence. Okay? So please do that. Um, yeah, New York versus... Stanford or, or really just about anywhere else. Okay. That's the S silence. Next a affirmations. Affirmations are so much more positive than thinking uh, more than just positive thinking. They're both systems, systems to help you with focus. The difference is that one of them when done right, boosts your vibrational frequency has the ability to rewire your brain. So that over time you begin to do things differently. I've done a bunch of trainings on affirmations. If you haven't seen it, please go back. Maybe I'll grab them from uh, YouTube. I'll upload them into the Google Drive. I've got a training inside the Google Drive that talks about, and if some of you guys are brand new, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, ask your accountability rep about the Google Drive. They can get you, or the uh, we've got a Skype channel geared towards becoming more productive. And in that, I'm putting in some additional training resources. So if you want to take advantage of it, then do. Um I've done these trainings on, on affirmations. Part of this is because you've gone through your life wired to think a certain way due to the influx of information. Your subconscious mind has picked up all of these things throughout the years. The affirmations are something that you can start to use to rewire because it's going to take time. Guys, if you started the affirmations challenge a couple of months ago and you've already given up on it, please start it again. If you did it for 30 days or you did it for half of those 30 days and you're going, ah, it didn't really give me what I thought it would, please try it again and keep trying it over and over and over again. Some of you guys may follow me on Instagram, some may not, but I was sitting at the gym yesterday and this is where the affirmations come in. And this is where going through that struggle and pushing yourself past is important. You know, I was sitting there and I, I, I was doing cardio that I don't enjoy, like I was pushing a sled back and forth and I was doing sprints. I don't enjoy doing that. Pushing a sled on artificial turf just sucks. It's not fun, right? But it works. It's high intensity. It burns calories. It gets my body going. I can feel a difference afterwards. I didn't wake up yesterday excited for it. I didn't want to go do the Stairmaster. I didn't want to do the, the sled. I, you know, It's not like you wake up oftentimes going, oh, I, I've got to do this. But I did it anyway. And you feel great afterwards. Or at least you feel good. Because everything releases into, you know, affirmations is kind of the same type of thing. And look, throughout the last year, as I've put health back on, you know, my priority list, it's become easier. And but I haven't been perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect when it comes to that kind of stuff. I, I enjoy fajitas and pizza and tacos. Like I, I like good food. I probably eat it more than I should. You know, it's affected how much I've been able to lose, but I've lost over the year, probably about 20 pounds. I've gotten myself healthier. I put myself in a better position, even though I've struggled with it at times because I consistently come back to it. Affirmations is one of those things as well. You're looking to rewire your brain and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in two weeks or three weeks. And for some of us, it may not even happen in two months or three months. It's something that you have spent the last 20, 30, 40 years thinking a certain way. It's going to take longer to shift than a 21-day process. And so if you have let go of it, come back. If you do it for a couple of days and you slip again, that's okay. Come back to it. The more consistency you can bring to it, the more powerful that transformation can become, the more it'll slowly work its way in and you'll be able to achieve something with it. And then those affirmations you'll get to the point where you wake up going, man, I 
I'm so ready for those. Or you'll go to bed thinking, I, I can't wait for them in the morning. Or you're automatically thinking them throughout the day. They can be powerful in your journey as an individual, as an entrepreneur. Next, visualizations. It activates the creative power of the subconscious mind, motivating it to work harder at creating solutions. You'll also have new levels of motivation and find yourself doing things that normally you would avoid, but that will take you closer to success. Jack Canfield is the author of uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Look, visualization. So detailed goals and visualizations. People that ha- are able to work on visualizations and, and put down specific goals are anywhere between 1.2 to 1.8 per- or times more likely to achieve a goal than someone that doesn't bother visualizing. Meaning you got a better chance if you're working on visualizing things. Just that. Just sitting down and thinking about it. If you go, well, I can't, you know, I try, but it's just not, you know, it's difficult for me to visualize it. Well, then keep practicing. That's a visualization board. or putting it on your phone or whatever you need to do. Spend some time visualizing it. Maybe during the time that you're silent. Right. Has anyone, how many of you have practiced visualization? Okay. A number of you. Good. Keep doing it. Don't give up on it. Is the video feed working? Michael's saying it's getting choppy. Is it all right? Okay. Okay. Next exercise. Andrew. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm doing it like the visual, visualization right because uh, I believe that Hal tells us like in the book like we have to feel like we already have what we are seeing and I don't know I just <laughs> imagine things I don't know. It's well, just... it doesn't necessarily have to be. Here's the thing about there's a difference, guys, in visualization and and goals and pushing yourself and doing more to to achieve goals and being delusional, right? Or, or visualizing the process to get to where you're going, right? And what I mean by being delusional is, you know, I had someone one time um, who had never been on social media at all, um, came and said, look, in the next five years, I want to be bigger than Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. And I, I stopped for a second. I said, well, Jeff Bezos didn't become Jeff Bezos in five years. You want to become bigger? I say, okay, so what problem are you going to solve? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, Jeff Bezos solved a a pretty large problem, right? And then he scaled that, and then he solved more problems, and he scaled that, and then he happened to hit it during a time when, you know, everything else happened, so it scaled even further. What problem are you wanting to solve? And you know, he's coming in and he's wanting, you know, I mean, look, build a rocket and fly to the moon, have a business that has however many hundreds of thousands at this point, possibly millions of employees. Okay. It's going to take more than five years. Right. I mean, that's just the reality. He's being a bit delusional. Now setting yourself up to achieve a certain income goal, looking at, you know, having your business set a certain way, living in a certain location, doing some of those things, the power of visualization, and I don't know, I you know, I've spoken with some of you that have achieved certain things because of the visualization that you've gone through. I know I've been able to do certain things because of that. There's power there. It doesn't have to be like imagine what it's like to be there. It doesn't have to be oh, I've I, you know, I've achieved a hundred million dollars. Like you know, look at the steps to get there as well, right? And maybe we'll do a, a more in depth training on visualization. So. Uh, Ernie's asking, is meditation in the morning your silence? So I do the affirmations and then I try to do some meditation. Um, Even if it's silence for me doesn't have to be like I'm sitting and not moving. But I try to make sure there's no other noise around. Now, I'm typically up before my fiance. So there's not that, you know, silence may just be going for a walk and not listening to music or a podcast or something like that silence could be all sorts of different things right um so yeah okay next exercise 
So early exercise will help you start the day with more energy, focus, optimism. Um, here real quick. Morning workouts, enhance your metabolism, cultivate consistency, physical, mental energy, and it'll help you get better sleep. Okay. Your cognitive function goes up more with exercise than it does with caffeine. So how many times have you said, oh, I just, I haven't had my cup of coffee yet. Switch it out. Five minutes of working out in the morning, 10 minutes, something to get your brain going can do more for you than caffeine will. Okay. How many trainers do we have on here that talk about doing stuff in the morning? Anybody? A few of you. Patricia, what's the benefits of working out first thing in the morning, especially if we are in that kind of 40 to 60 year old range? Why should I do something like that? 40 and up. Um. Basically, what you just said is, you know, it really jump starts the day, the metabolism. Um, for me, it's it does energize my day, it gets me focused on what's important, but also for doing something that's a little bit of impact, we've got to strengthen our bones. We want to boost our metabolism, especially as we are boomers and beyond, or even if we're not boomers, we still want to boost our metabolism. Um, you eat better when you exercise early in the day. There's, so, wait, there's eating, a list. so exercising in the morning is going to help my yeah. diet throughout the day. Yeah. How does yeah. That if you if you exercise well for me, it's just my mojo. If I exercise in the morning, it's like, well, I'm gonna. It's not a. I don't want the reward. I want the reward of good food to nourish my body, to strengthen me, to keep me, you know, charging full speed ahead. Because I need my energy not just for me, but for my clients. So think yeah. about the people that you are impacting with your. Your, with your being. And when you are raring to go, not only do you succeed, but so do the people around you. Okay. Well, fantastic. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So it, um, again, guys, exercise can be essential any time of the day, but if you're able to do it in the morning, it's going to benefit cognitively. It's going to give you some benefits. You're going to be at a higher level of productivity throughout the day, which is going to benefit your clients. Ultimately, that's what we're looking for. If I can write better, if I can connect more because I exercise a little bit, it's going to help me with my food intake, all sorts of different things. Um, I like my full exercise. Personally, I do my full exercise later, but I do something in the morning to jumpstart my day, right? I stretch some. I've got some barbells behind me. I got some bands. I just do something because it keeps things moving. Right. That's and that's what allows me to flow. Kind of, blood flow that? as well. Blood yeah. flow. Absolutely. I know my calls in the morning and the work that I do goes better when I do a little bit active. So um, Ernie talking about doing a fast. So when it comes to, you know, just as a, um, disclaimer, because I've got to, because everyone's in a different situation. If you're, ne if you haven't been active for a real long time, seek out the, the help or advice of a medical professional, um, diet wise, before you do anything crazy, whether you decide you want to go keto or you want to go paleo, or you want to go vegan, or you want to do intermittent fasting, all of those things can be incredibly beneficial for different people at different times for different reasons. Um, where we can't give you full nutritional advice and things like that here, other than the fact that we can all be better. We could all probably use some type of supplementation because I don't care how good your diet is. Most food nowadays just doesn't have the same nutrients that it did decades ago. So even if you're vegan, oftentimes I get this and I got it, uh, you know, when I was doing nutritional microscopy, oh, I don't need that. I get everything from the plants and stuff that I eat. Odds are you don't. There's a good chance that you don't because it's not the same thing. Oh, but I eat organically. Well, are they, you know, rotating the soil as often as they should? Are they, you know, giving it the right kind of nutrients? Are they adding this? Do they have that? Like supplementation can be helpful. All of that said, please, you know, seek out a nutritionist or a doctor if you have to. But at the same time, as long as you're not going too extreme, you can test certain things out, right? I know dairy for me in general I don't have a problem with milk sugar. I have a problem with milk fat, but any dairy, even if I'm doing skim milk, like I, I feel like my face floats up and like I retain water in a different way. So I don't drink dairy, right? There's other th certain carbs will affect me, right? Like 
everybody's going to be a little bit different. Figure out what works for you. But exercise is one of those things that everybody can do, even if it's limited. Everybody can be a little bit more active. So I just shared the Skype channel. That's why that is. Okay, next, reading. Okay. I've talked about this before. Average people don't read enough. Leaders are reading 60 to 100 times more than regular people. Leaders are readers, but not, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders read. What you read is going to be important. I've given a book list. If you run through those five books, you want other books, let me know. I mean, describe your situation. There's probably a book that I can recommend. But a couple of reasons why reading is important, guys. It lowers stress levels by as much as 68% which is more than listening to music. It's more than having a cup of tea or coffee and it's more than taking a walk. Reading, in part because it allows your brain to kind of get away from the current situation for a, a few minutes. And sometimes that is one of the most beneficial things that we have, okay? Uh, it can be like mental gymnastics for the brain. The research supports the notion that reading influences our thought process and is a very for potent form of brain training. And, and you, then, yes, I want to share something. I just okay. uh, came back from a vacation and I was there with my father and a, and a friend of mine. And then we took like four books. Like we were like supposed to be there uh, in, at the place for seven days. And my dad just read the books, <laughs> the four of them in seven days. And I was like, holy crap. And uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I couldn't. So, yeah, reading, some people read faster and that's, you know, that's great. Look, um, Michelle's asking, does it matter what type of books? I don't, I don't think that as far as the stress reduction goes, then that part may not be as affected. Overall personal development, growth and brain training. Yeah, there's going to be a difference, right? You'll want to read things. So I balance out because I love some good you know, fantasy and fiction novels. I absolutely do. There's a handful of authors that I really love. So every time a book comes out, I've got it. I've got a list of books, a lot of books inside my Kindle that I haven't read yet that I'm getting to. Um, but then I also have, you know, my personal development books and everything. So like right now, the personal development book that I'm reading, and I'm not saying you have to go out and buy this, you know, stick with the ones that you've got. I'm reading Future Proofing You. It was a book that I saw. I thought it was kind of a cool concept. Um, so I went and got, grabbed that. So I'm in the middle of reading that. I'll have that done uh, within the week. I'll grab a different one. Everybody, you know, is a little bit different. I read both. If you like physical book, I read physical books and Kindle and I'll listen to Audible. But the reading for stress reduction is going to be actual reading and not the audio version. Right. So because you're it's different parts of functionality for the brain. OK. Any other questions on reading? No, we're good there. All right. So one of the last things here is scribing. So this is the last S for savers. What he's talking about is writing, journaling, right? All sorts of different things, free writing. So I like doing it in the morning and I'm doing more and more at night. Okay. It helps regulate emotions, gain perspective. Um, one of the reasons it's important at night is because of that. Just that emotional toll. And, and if you're frustrated, sitting down and writing out gratitude will help you. And, and studies have been done with this, where if you're at the end of the night doing a little bit of free writing and then sitting down and writing out things that you're grateful for helps improve sleep quality. How much more peacefully are you going to sleep if you write down what you're grateful for before you sleep versus laying down and stewing over frustrating things that you've got? Okay, so uh, discover the ideas that you didn't know you had. The best way to solve a particular challenge problem is to work really hard on it for a while and go do something else and then bring clarity and focus to your work. I like writing down goals and some ideas first thing in the morning. I've got um, a book here. Every single day I'll write in my goals and then a couple of thoughts that I have along that line. And then I've got another book that I write out at night. That's kind of, that's my diary. So I, that's what I do. Right. Hopefully you guys have something along those lines. So savers, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E we have silence, affirmations, visualizations, exercise, reading, and scribing. 
Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs. It's a fantastic book. Even if you don't want to read it, go on to YouTube sometime today and do a, a five to 10 minute, you know, find one of those, um, you know, summaries. You can watch that. But take a look at your day, figure out what you can do. Now, the full savers time frame doesn't mean I have to spend an hour with each one of those. Five to 10 minutes of silence, five to 10 minutes of affirmations, five to 10 minutes of visualization all the way through. So 35 minutes to an hour ballpark is what I spend in the morning to get myself going. If you can't do that long, then a minute of each one is still better than nothing. Because for those seven minutes, you've taken control of yourself and your day and your actions. And then if you can do it again later in the day, sit down, okay, I've got a minute and just rock through it. It's empowering when you take that time for yourself because it's something that you control, okay? Again, all of this is to help you figure out what works best for you. If you can become more efficient in the morning, the rest of your day will become more efficient, all right? On that note, go out and kick some butt. I'm gonna upload this um, into the Google Drive here later on today, and uh, we'll keep you guys rock and rolling. Appreciate you. Email if you have any questions, and um, new information coming soon. Talk to you later, guys. Oh, oh wait, oh, oh, here I'm gonna. Sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are. <laughs>